Now also the control back tick shortcut toggles the terminal visibility between up and down. I also have command J as a toggle for panel visibility as well. This is a key binding that you'll see me use pretty often because we often will flip back and forth between the terminal and our code, which is gonna be up here. In fact, if we click this explore button on the left, we can select this area, select new file, do something like hello.txt or better yet, hello.soul. We're gonna add some code in here. What's important to know is if you see this white dot in the top section here, this means that this file isn't saved. Command S or Control S, depending on if you're on a Windows or Mac or Linux, will save it and make that white dot go away. Unsaved, saved. Unsaved, saved. It's important to recognize if a file is saved or not because if it's not saved, it might not do what you think it should do. So I kind of by default will always automatically save by hitting Command S, and it's a good practice to get into. Just always auto save everything you do. We can also delete this file we just created by right clicking it and selecting delete, move to trash. Final thing that we want to install and we'll install a lot of these as we go along is actually an AI extension, something in VS Code to help us actually have AI inside of our Visual Studio Code. If you select this little box looking thing that says extensions, you get a search box which allows you to search for extensions. The AI that I work with the most is GitHub Copilot, but you can use whatever AI you want, or you could just not even use an AI. GitHub Copilot does cost money to use, so feel free to also not use it. There's some other free VS Code extensions that use AI, so feel free to browse around and choose which one you like. For me, I'm gonna go ahead and install GitHub Copilot. You'll get a little guy in the bottom right for your VS Code that will let you know that you've done it correctly. You'll need to sign into GitHub, which is something that we've recently made, in order for it to work. Now, you'll see me using GitHub Copilot pretty often when I write my code. Because I have this little doodad on down here, I can start writing some code and GitHub Copilot will start giving me suggestions as to what I should write. For example, if I were to add SPDX license identifier, GitHub Copilot actually automatically starts to gray out and give me a suggestion. If I hit tab, I can auto-complete my code with GitHub Copilot suggestion. Alternatively, what I could do, then for example, I could keep coding and I can see it's already giving me a suggestion here. And if I hit up key enter, I'll actually open up this bit on the side where GitHub Copilot will give me a ton of different solutions on what it thinks I'm trying to write. And I can just pick one of these solutions. Obviously some of these aren't doing anything. We'll learn about the command palette soon. And we can also use any of the GitHub Copilot commands that come with the command palette. An alternate to VS Code is a tool called VS Codium. So VS Code is a tool that's owned by Microsoft and it sends up telemetry data up to Microsoft. So basically it can send data about ways to make your experience better with VS Code. For people who have a more security mindset, this is an open sourced version of VS Code that I highly recommend you check it out. Another extension that you might wanna add is GitHub Copilot Labs. GitHub Copilot Labs has AI features that are experimental. So it might be worth installing as well. All right, fantastic. At this point, you should be 100% set up with Visual Studio Code and Git. If you're using Gitpod, that's great as well. And if you're using Windows, you should be 100% using WSL because the rest of the commands are only gonna work if you're using WSL and we're only gonna be working with Linux, Bash, or ZSH commands moving forward. If you want to be a hardo, like I was saying, do everything in PowerShell, that's great too. Moving forward, what I want you guys all to do is open up your terminal, the different ways I showed you, and create a folder by typing in mkdir foundry hyphen f23. And then you do cd foundry f23. You'll notice something else I do a lot is I'll type the first couple letters of the folder I wanna go into, and then I'll hit tab, which will auto-complete a lot of stuff for you in the terminal. Sometimes it doesn't work, you'll get better at figuring out what auto-completes and what doesn't. If I hit enter, this means I'm now inside of my Foundry F23 folder and I can run commands inside of this folder. Moving forward, I want you to put all of your repositories inside this folder. This way, moving forward in the future, when you start actually working on projects in real life, you can refer back to this folder and refer back to code that you wrote and refer back to your notes to make sure that you understand stuff moving forward. We've got git dash dash version, forge dash dash version, 
we have cast dash dash version, which cast came with Forge and Foundry. We have Anvil dash dash version, and we also have Chisel dash dash version. I'm going to type clear or hit Command K to clear everything in the terminal. 